Fancy sponsoring the Battle Fever Network? Fancy having your business cut your logo or our social media graphics and your details being read out on our shows? Well, now you can. Get in touch with us on any of our social media platforms or email us at battlefeverpod at outlook.com. That's battlefeverpod at outlook.com. Hashtag keep the battle fever on. This show is brought to you by the Battle Fever Network. If you haven't already, then please follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Just search the Battle Fever podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and never miss a pod again. Hit that subscribe button and you're in. If you don't, we'll send Paul at Seas round to your door for a talking to. And trust me, you don't want that. You can talk for days. It is safer really just to subscribe. If I said it's beautiful, it's deep in history. And I know what I'll find when the place comes alive. I got that battle fever. When I was a young boy, my father said to me, Put this scarf around your neck and sing the blues with me. And now I am much older. There's a place I want to be. It's red for said it's beautiful. It's deep in history. And I know what I'll find when the place comes alive. I got that battle. Hello everybody, welcome to the Battle Fever Network. We are on week two of the pre-season diary. No very much to talk about, but a wee bit. There's a wee bit, wee bit of things ready to happen, just getting there, do you know what I mean? Um, obviously the, the very first graphic that we put up, uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with Andy Gorham's friends and family after the sad news that he passed, um, I think it was on Saturday. Andy was a, a hero to his own a, and a legend to, you know, not just Rangers Football Club, but Many, probably the majority of football clubs, to be fair, that he played, he played for because he just was that kind of character. Um, gutted to hear about his sad passing. Um, Derek, I noticed the Rangers review, mate, had a, had a nice, you know, it was a kind of memories thing of, um, in the pod they were doing, it was a kind of memories, uh, Andy, uh, Andy Corum, and I thought it was, I thought it was really touching some of the memories, you know, putting up for fans and stuff like that, but it was a nice touch. Um, and I'm sure I speak for others when I say we're gutted and that our thoughts are with his, his friends and his family. Going on, just a wee bit of pod business with a wee threat there at the start of the show that policies will be coming to your door if you don't subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. That threat is real, and believe you me, we've got them in a group chat and you don't want them at your door because you'll be there for a long, long time. Delighted to say, though, he is back this week. Policies, how are you doing, mate? Fuck, before you've even started. Yeah, mate, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave I gave you a wee sample early on in a, in a private message on the, uh, what, the, what, what the viewers uh, can expect. You know, I started off by talking about Miguel and yeah, that, that's uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. I subscribed to main channel because of that. Thanks, mate. Yeah, he did actually. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what the reply was. If that's the sort of standard I get. That's it. I fucking don't know. So there you go. It's great to be back. Thank you very much for having me. Good mate. Joining us again this week is the Rangers reviewers Derek Clark. How are we, mate? No bad, Scott. Uh, happy to be back on again. Uh, I'm actually flying out to Portugal uh, later, so I'm looking forward to that. Taking in the, the game on Saturday against Sunderland, and you get a right good feeling that the season is nearly upon us again. And I'm no jealous in the slightest. Uh, <laughs> you see the sunshine there? You better take some fat <laughs> duffel coat with you. And don't, don't be worried about that, Paul. There's, a, there's a, a spare suitcase I'm taking, complete with uh, sun creams and all sorts of lotions and what have you, so I'll be yeah, lathered up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what you say, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also back this week, he was on last week as ICW staunch superstar Jason Reed. How are we doing, mate? All good, Scott. All good. Good to be uh, good to be back on the pod. Uh, yeah, like the, the 
like the boys were saying, uh, good to catch up. Still quaking in my boots from that uh, threat at the beginning of the show. But, uh, you know, listen, we'll, uh, we'll subscribe as soon as we're done here and uh, we'll be good to go. <laughs> Speaking of animosity, I said, before we get started, Jason, I want your thoughts on this. Wait up, brother. Hey, 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 wait up. Listen, man, you need, like, I know we've spoken about this, but you need to stop listening to that man. All that nonsense in between. I, like, I appreciate you for the dab one, but see if you'd spend more time beating the guy up instead of listening to him, you'd have hit that bomb. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Want you to understand, son, right? No. See if you'd listen to me more than listen to the shit nah, that this I'll man just, puts in your I'll head. I'm telling you, he was listening to you. He was going to the dab You want to listen to me? We had a plan to put him away. You don't need to listen to him. What's he ever fucking done? What have you ever done? I've done more of this sport than you've done. You've done shit. What have you done? Both of you shut the fuck up! I'm done. Both of you. Oh, are you happy with yourself? Fucking done now. Honestly, God, mate. Well, someone uh, never had this Weetabix uh, that morning. <laughs> Did you get your Snickers, uh, mate, when you went out? <laughs> this is the unfortunate thing. When there's cameras around 24-7, uh, you know, they pick up uh, little bits like this from time to time. Um. I mean, first of all, nice T-shirt. You know, we've got to give props to the shirt that was in there. Uh, second of all, um, you know, there's two two people who are obviously, you know, very well known in uh, professional wrestling, especially in ICW, who've both done, uh, you know, wonderful things uh, in their own careers. Uh, their paths are obviously clearly crossing uh, at some point uh, throughout this kind of uh, team that we've decided to, to work on. Uh, so the team's no longer, you know, Coach and I will, will, you know, may look to go our separate ways. Uh, me and Andy will go our separate ways as well. And, uh, you know, I, I'll just continue doing what I'm doing uh, inside the ring and that's, uh, you know, showcasing uh, what we do best. So uh, we, we move on and uh, we look forward to Shug's house party uh, on the uh, the 30th uh, of July at the O2. Quality, mate. And why don't you send you some more staunch merchandise so that you can wear it? Um, but moving on to the football side of things, changes from last week. As we said, the club have flown to Portugal, and Derek said he's joining them later on, but it's, it's flown to, to Portugal. John Suter has joined up with the squad. We mentioned John Suter last week, Paul. What's your thoughts on the John Suter signing? Where do you see him fitting in? And also your general thoughts just up till now on pre-season. Uh, John Suter, I see him fitting in that centre back. Obviously, that's what he's signed for. <laughs> I don't know, Pete. Yeah, you know, what I mean? step forward one. I mean, I mean, he may, yeah, very much doubt it. No, I think he's. I think if we can keep him fit, uh, and that's just this is just like the usual sort of nonsense people are saying. But if we can keep him fit, he'd be a fantastic signing. You saw what the kind of player he is in the Scottish Cup final. He was Hearts' best player by a country mile. Well, out, certainly outfield player. Um, if he can bring that sort of uh, performance to Rangers. With having Connor Goldson, which I imagine it's going to be beside him, the team with Tav on the right and um, either Bassi or Bassi on the left hand side, I think we've got a pretty solid defence here. Um, I think he's going to bring vast amounts of physicality because he's a very physical player. He understands the Scottish game very well. Uh, his possession, his, uh, his distribution is pretty good as well from what I've seen from the stats. Um, and I think I think he could be providing keeping fit. I think he could be an amazing amazing signing for us. And also, let's not forget, he's a Rangers man anyway. His family are season ticket holders, so there you go. Place he's the badge. The option. He's the option, though, as well, like going three to back, which to yeah. from time to time last year, especially in Europe. So hmm. there's there's options there, which I think, Jason, we've probably been lacking. Not, not lacking, maybe, in, in terms of um, numbers, but we've been lacking. Maybe the manager at the time, Gerard, didn't want to, to tinker with formations or with selection, etc. So at least hmm. now we've seen Gio, within a game, be flexible with his formation. And I think that the signings, that, that's why I think it's really, really important that we get these signings right that we're trying to, you know, we're obviously trying to make this summer. We can go out and sign players left, right and centre, but it's not to say that they're the correct players that fits that style of play that Gio wants. Being able to play maybe one or two positions within a squad. Yeah, and I think that's obviously an important thing as well. You know, as fans, you, you're obviously sitting and you're waiting 
uh, on uh, players being announced or you know players being signed or even the rumours that you sometimes kind of clutch to. But um, I think you would rather, I think every fan would rather uh, we take our time and get the signings right than uh, you know just get a bunch of signings in the door for the sake of announcing things. Uh, and you know they're they're all wrong. They're not the right fit, or uh, perhaps they aren't they aren't up to standard, etc. Uh, etc. Et you know the list can go on. So yeah, um, it's it's good to always get signings in the door, but I would certainly prefer to have the correct signings. And I think as Paul said, you know it's good to to get um, Suter in the door now. Provides that uh, that other option uh, for when we're playing three at the back. It maybe re- releases Lundstrom back into the middle of the park, perhaps. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely good to have the extra option in there. Derek, are you rooming with any players when you go out to Portugal? Or well, if I was, I, I don't think it would want your room with Scott Arfield, given that the <laughs> event uh, popped up in the Rangers. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fucking bumper. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good. Yeah. It's good that I uh, don't get me wrong, I seen like the first 15 replies to it and it was all Rangers fans. What is this? That isn't a sign and that doesn't look like Jolak. Like, hmm. You're like ah, they're trying to bring us content, man. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. On a pre-season trip. Get a break, right? There'll be signings announced when signings are announced. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, Absolutely. so wait, what about your no, the, the facilities look quite good in Portugal, don't they? Where they've, where they've went. They obviously, I've seen Van Dyke there as well. And was that Nathan Ake was there as well? Yeah, uh, it's uh, top of the range, isn't it? And uh, I've been lucky enough that they're, they're going to give me a tour when I head out there and, and I can have a look for myself to see what it's like. So um, uh, it's top, top of the range. Uh, some of the best clubs in the planet go there for, for sort of intense uh, training camps. Uh, Rangers heading over there, of course, uh, culminating in that friendly. Over in Albufeira against uh, Sunderland, which will which will be good. There'll be a lot of players heading out, of course, for, for that one. Um, I think I've had a look at the, the size of the ground. It doesn't look the, the, the biggest. I've got to be honest, but I think there'll be lots of vantage points for uh, supporters to to, to to watch the game. But um, it'll just be good to just get the football back on again, won't it? I think we've been starved a wee bit. It seems like a long time mm-hmm. since that Scottish Cup final. So cannot wait for it, even though it is obviously just a a pre-season friendly. It's just a game to look forward to again. Well, we had a game a couple of days ago as well, Derek, 3-2 against Partick Thistle. Two kind of different teams playing um, either half, to be honest, but minutes in the tank and minutes in the leg, in the legs for, for each of the players. Um, John Lindstrom scored, Scotty Wright, uh, and I think it was Josh McPake, the other one. McPake, there's been a lot of talk about it. It seems to be for the last two, three years, Especially when Gerard brought him in the European game and he scored, but he's never really managed to reach that. I know there's been contract disputes and whatever else that's been going on. But what is it, Derek? Are you privy to any information whether Josh McPake would? Well, I suppose Josh McPake would look to play a part this season, but whether the management team would want Josh McPake to play a part because, as I said, it has been talked now for a couple of years. I think I think he's he's obviously. Been given a pre-season with the team he was um doing a lot of work himself in the last uh, few weeks trying to sort of get fit enough to, to give it a right good bash in the summer i think it's make or break for him he's had about five loans i think it is now a lot of them down <coughs> south uh he's done reasonably well but he's at an age now where uh, a decision has got to be made he, him alongside guys like stephen kelly glenn middleton's another one where i mean they're good players but if they're not going to get game time for the sake of their careers they're going to have to move and go elsewhere. So um, I think this summer's huge for them. Uh, it's the first real chance for Van Bronckhorst really to have a, a proper look at them uh, because they were out on loan. With Stephen Kelly he told him to go out on loan in January. I think that was a mistake last summer when he did really, really well and I felt he deserved a chance. But Gerard uh, decided against it and it was six months wasted for me for Stephen Kelly and he should have went in and loan at the start of the last season. Um, so it's a chance for all of them to sort of Try and impress the the manager. Um, I don't. The jury's out. I've I've got to see him in action. I think the only time I've really seen him was was it the the Berry friendly or, or something? Was it the Wigan friendly or something? He, he scored in. Um, yeah. But apart from that, I've seen him once down here when he played against Bolton and he was playing for uh, Harrogate Town and he was he was okay. But that's that was League Two level. Um, I'm not quite sure if he has the tools to make it at Rangers, I'd have to see with my own eyes, but um, I'd, I'd like these boys to get a chance because you always want to see the homegrown 
lads get an opportunity, don't you? But when you've got the likes of Alex Lowry, I think he's sort of ahead in the pecking order. Expect him to play more of a part next season. Leon King's another one. Um, it remains to be seen if there's any more of these guys that are, are going to get a chance. But um, yeah, jury's out on the likes of McPake, Kelly and uh, Middleton, I would say. Paul, it sees Patty Thistle friendly, 3-2, the best on earth, opens the scoring, uh, John Lundstrom. Are you any further along in replacing that line in the song that says he's going to win as the Europa League? Hmm. I know you took that personally on at the tail end of last season to reinvent <laughs> that line of the song as it's still a political. Ah, did you know, mate, he did. Let's name back, he did. I don't recall that, but there we go. Okay. <laughs> but it's good to see him score. Me yes, okay. Jersey. I have taken it further. And it's, it's no, he's not going to win the Zero Pro League. He's going to win as a Champions League. Oh, that's a yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> send your complaints to Paul at if we don't win the Champions League. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sweet child of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see him back in a blue jersey, though, mate. Isn't it? Yeah. Scott yeah. Wright, the same. You know, all the, all the guys back. It's, we've been starved the Rangers for what it feels like so long now, but. It's good to see him back. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just yeah, I saw his goal um, and some highlights, and it was a thunder bastard. You know, a typical left foot rifle from him. And I hope he started this, this, the uh, pre season and, and the matches. I hope that continues throughout the rest of the season. I hope we get the John Lundstrom over the last uh, the last six months of the season starting and continuing on for this season. If we do, I think we're a real a real diamond in our hands there. You know, he's, he's a Sort of a powerhouse in that midfield, and he offers something completely different. He pops up and scores these amazing goals. It's the right place at the right time. So, yeah, I, 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 as you say, we've been starved of football for so long now. Um, it's just even just you know watching preseason kickabouts. You're like, oh. you know, it's just it's fantastic. Three two against Party Thistle, Jason, and I was like, ah, fucking scored two against this man. That's not good enough. But it's only one game. <laughs> it's only the first game. <laughs> I know. No, I mean, what's going on with that defence? It's fucking Dead shocking. Man. Get them sorted out, eh? Get them sorted out. <laughs> Just glad to have the football back, man. And mm. uh, the old uh, the old Rudo at ICW is a Partick Thistle fan, so mm-hmm. always good to pick up a win uh, against that dirty mob. <laughs> uh, so, uh, aye. Uh, yeah, it's good. good start to uh, the, uh, the pre-season journey. Or the season, if you like. Yeah. Jason, Joe Aribo as well. It's, well, it's been widely reported now, but Joe Aribo looks set to move on in the next couple of days um, to Southampton. £10 million pound package. It's the first first transfer I've ever seen where everybody's talking about a package all the time. Do you know what I mean? Usually it's just, there's your fee, we add-ons, or whatever it might be, but this one's a whole package. So Joe Aribo moving on to Southampton. I think we expected it. I think we said last week that Joe Aribo was probably going to be the one out of the three that would most likely move on. The other two... Obviously, Alfie's got his fitness to prove and Ryan Kent's got performances and form to prove, really. Um, what was your thoughts then in, in, in Joe Arriba? No, it looks like it's actually concrete. It's going to happen. Um, what, what, what do you make of that? And is Southampton the right move for him? Um, do you know what? Like, it's always sad to see a good player leave the team. Like, I think as a fan, you'll always kind of be gutted at a player, especially a player that, that, that's given us quite a lot of memories, especially last season as well. You know, scoring in the final. It's always sad to see a player leave, but um, I think, I think from me, from a, from my own perspective, he's probably one of the players I wouldn't have really minded a whole lot over losing. Um, I think it's a good good deal as well. You know, I mean, what did we pay from? Like, a, it was like two hundred fifty thousand or something. It was, it was under a million anyway, right? And you know, we're getting ten million back. We've got some decent uh, decent performances from him and we're making a good sort of turnover profit as well uh so for me you know it is what it is hopefully we can use some of those funds to get a decent player in uh maybe a goal scorer um in the door and yeah a few more options uh, this season but uh yeah you know it's sad but <laughs> not heartbroken Derek on Southampton as well Celtic have sold a couple of players to Southampton over the years they've managed to, to negotiate a, a huge sell-on fee um, or sell on percentage, um, if you like. And then when you're Van Dykes, when Yamas, etc., have took the move to bigger clubs, Celtic have got a cut of that as well. I suppose that's where and the Ross Wilson thing, Ross Wilson's obviously got contacts in there considering he works for the club. So is that the right club for Joe Rebo to go to? And also, what do you make of the deal in itself in terms of financially for Rangers? 
I think it's a good club for him to go to. I like how Southampton play. I think he'll do well down there. Um, I think he'll, he'll play most weeks, uh, I would imagine. It's a, I would say it's a bargain from, from their point of view. Um, I was on a couple of their, their fans' forums and um, they're really excited. They think they're getting a, a bargain. The figures quoted, even the package that you say at £10 million, it's still in today's money. That is for Joe Rebo, a guy that's proven at the top level, scored, of course, in that Europa League final. Um, it's it's peanuts for, for a club like Southampton. Um, but going into the final year, his contract, I think that's probably the best you could look for. And I don't think Rangers could have risked um, going into January. Of course, they can then negotiate a deal for nothing and, and, and head off. I think they do need to use the money and recycle the squad a little bit. And of all the players that are out of contract, Kent and Morelos, I think he was the one... Um, I think you could lose um, and not suffer too much in terms of what he gives to the team. Uh, last The first six months of last season, he was the best player in Scotland, no doubt about it. But then once he went away with the, uh, Nigeria, with the African Cup of Nations, he just looked jaded when he came back, I think mentally and physically. I think he played, what, 70 games last season, yeah. which is just frightening. So he, he was in dire need of a rest. Um, so I think, I think the money is decent. You just hope that it's spent wisely and, and reinvested into the squad. I'd, I don't imagine the whole amount will be spent on, on one player. You might see Ross Wilson going out and trying to get uh, a couple of project players, perhaps two, three million pounds in players, and then developing because that's what the model is now, isn't it? When they got my rebo, he wasn't the, the finished article by any stretch of the imagination. So um, I think it's probably the best you could you could have hoped for. I think they'll do well at Southampton. They, there was a lot of talk about Palace, and, and I think you would have done well there as well. These sort of clubs, sort of bottom half of the Premier League, I think it would fit in well with, with any of them, to be honest with you. He's got the talent, hasn't he, to uh, to really do well. And I'll keep an eye on see how he gets on. I think you'll, um, I can see him moving on for an even bigger fee, put it that way, in, in a couple of years. And that's where we need to future proof ourselves, isn't it? Yeah. To, yeah. to get a cut of that money as well. And, and hopefully, Ross Wilson and, and the team are doing that. Paul, I'm going to bring you in on this, but. Joe Rebo obviously gave us one of the most memorable moments, I would say, as a Rangers supporter and scoring that goal in Seville. It made us believe for however long it made us believe for. Um, I was way you when that went in. We, could yeah. be, we actually were in disbelief at times, as much as we all hoped we could win it. Um, we were in disbelief. Where I, I, Joe will go my best wishes. I think he's been a fantastic signer for Rangers. As Derek says, it's part of the model. Buy low, sell high. Given his contract situation, Southampton probably are getting a discount overall. But it's it's the world that we're in at the minute with, with the players' contract, etc. I've seen a lot of talk on social media about his, his lack of consistency. Certainly not in game time, because as Derek says, he's played 70 games this season alone, or last season alone. I think the quality when Joe Rebo's on it is unbelievable, to be honest with you. And he's a special player who can unlock defences. And I think we might miss him next season. Um, given the way teams play against us, especially at Ibrox. Um, a lot of people saying about Alex Lowry, it's okay if Joe Rebo goes because we have Alex Lowry there as a, as a as a replacement. You can't say inconsistency in Joe Rebo and then Alex Lowry as his direct replacement in the same sentence. The reason being, obviously, is he's a young player. Um, Alex Lowry, when he came in two, three, four times, whatever it was last season, looked the part. He's coming in to impress. Being the man that's that's given the task of unlocking defences week in, week out in a Rangers team, given the demands of our support, is something that we have to manage carefully with Alex Lowry and make sure we don't, you know, kill that potential because that's his potential is unbelievable. He could go yeah. for millions as well. Where do you see Alex Lowry fitting into that in terms of the Joe Rebo transfer? Does he come in as his replacement? Again, I just think we need to be cautious, mate. We can't expect too much too soon. He's such a young player. Yeah, um, it's, it's a bit of a tough one because people are seeing Lowry as the, the, the successor to Aribo. Uh, as you say, it's how it's how that's managed by Gio and the management team. Personally, I would like to I would like to see Lowry get more game time. Um, he may not start every match. Um, it's it's a it's a tough one really because you don't as you say you don't want to throw him to the, you don't want to throw him to the Lions as such. Do you know what I mean? Because it, because, as you say, all it takes a couple of bad games, crowd gets in his back, confidence slips, and then that's it. Do you know what I mean? So we need to be really careful how he's managed. I would like to... 
it's, it's, it's I, I, I really, it's a tough one to answer. Um, I've said before, and I actually put in the group chat, I, I think if we will go, is we're okay, we've got a replacement in Lowry, but is he ready? That's only, only there's only two people can answer that, and that's Alex Lowry himself and Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Between them, they'll, they'll, they'll know if he's ready. In fact, the only person who really know that is Lowry. And I'm and he looks as if he's a player full of confidence because, as you say, when he's come in, he's performed, he's performed pretty well, and has been, I, I, he's been, he's scored a couple of cracking goals as well. Um, first and forward, so I I would have no personally, I would have no issues with playing Alex Lowry it, it, if a rebuild goes, which is which is looking incredibly likely now. And I just just on that, I think just to echo what the boys have said beforehand: three hundred thousand pound development fee, selling for ten million um, with the add-ons. And apparently, I read a report I saw somewhere on the internet today that there is a and this was from a, down at Southampton a official site or something saying there is a substantial sell-on clause being inserted as well. I mean, that could be 20 30 percent if the guy goes for 20 or 30 million that's that's a lot of money you know what i mean so um yeah. but to go back to the point i would i would have no issues uh playing uh, alex lowry you know whether Gio wants to spend the money that comes in on another direct replacement that's entirely up to himself i don't particularly see that's necessary like Derek says bring in somebody who can sort of be maybe we'll take with lowry or develop one it just depends but um lowry out of out of the three uh, Morelos, Kent, and Aribo. Aribo would be the one you'd kind of think, yeah, well, we'd, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be not happy, but if he goes, then he, obviously, you know, that's it. Uh, I'd rather keep Kent and I'd especially keep, rather keep Morelos out of the three of them. Morelos is the top one you want to keep. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, for the ins and outs of the Joe Aribo deal, if you want to find out facts, then go and follow <laughs> any sort of Celtic blog on the internet and you will find <laughs> facts on everything to do with that deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's an illness, by the way. It's a three, total illness. Three, three, three year in, three yearly instalments of two million, and then he added ones after that for his fourth year. Yeah, uh, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. Watertight coming out of Rangers, by the way. There's nothing there, right? There's no rumours, no nothing. Absolutely watertight. Yeah, they know the ins and outs of every single. You see, that's the thing. You talk about. I, I, I love the fact that we are watertight like that. You, you don't know really what's going on uh, until it's actually announced. But at the same time, for people like us, us trying to do podcasts, it's a fucking pain in the arse. Let's be honest. Like Adele does it for a living. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> aye. We just play this. I, 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 bet, I bet Adele knows actually more than if he's letting on. That's the thing. <laughs> All I'm saying is there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that uh, a lot of the media aren't privy to. Um, so I, I, I'm quite comfortable with the fact that I think, I, I know supporters are getting uptight because of the lack of new faces, but... You've got to trust that the manager and the recruitment team are working hard on the targets. They'll, they'll know the players they want to bring in um, and hopefully they get them in before the Champions League qualifiers because yeah. you don't want them coming in afterwards if you get knocked out and then uh, you're sort of behind the eight ball, aren't you? And then the pressure's on sort of thing. So hopefully they get them in sooner rather than later. But you'll be yeah, surprised. Definitely. I think you'll be surprised in the amount of names that are in the public domain as opposed to the ones that actually sign. He did awesome. tell us off here, right? He did tell us off here. And I've got Paul and Jason to be my witness here. That my, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is just discussing his release yep. from Manchester United. <laughs> and it will see CR7 make the move. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, I'd rather it's, have CR7. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's no coincidence he's in Portugal and look for Champions League football, really, is uh, it? Yeah, listen. <laughs> I, I, hey, I'm not saying that Derek definitely said that. I'm just saying... <laughs> and we and we all know we all know Derek's suitcase is packed with a, a combination of factor duffel coat and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's slim tone thing for his belly. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, one thing that Gio is known for through his time at final, etc., is giving youth a chance. So I think as Paul says about get, get Lowry getting the extra games this year, I think we will see that. I think it just has to be managed. We can't expect him to be the light for light replacement. I agree, yeah. And I think, like, obviously, we've seen glimpses of all, all the young boys sort of last game of the season at Tynecastle. And, you know, I appreciate the heat's almost off in a sense there with the last game. Everything's tied up. But, um, you know, you can you can see um, you can see how good the, the, the young lads actually are. But I think certainly Gio, um, you know, if if Lowry is going to be the replacement for Aribo, then I think there will be stages throughout the season that Gio needs to protect Lowry. And perhaps take him out the firing line from time to time, uh, you know. Because I think it's one thing saying he's going to replace Aribo 
um, which is fine when you think about the domestic season. But then if we have Champions League group stage, uh, you know, are, are we playing Lowry in those Champions League games and, and throwing him in right in the deep end and, and having him in it every single game? Because, uh, you know, that's 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 the replacement, so to speak. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, I've got a lot of faith in Gio um, to, to make the right call. And, and like you said, Scott, you know, he's got good experience and good track record working with the younger players. So, um, yeah, no no doubts uh, that that's going to continue this season. Just going to yeah. chuck a name in the hat here, if you don't mind. Like the, f- the forgotten man, really, from last season, who could be a direct replacement for a repo, we've already got Yanis Hadji. Yaris, Yaris will be like a new signing, by the way. Yeah, because don't forget, how many people used to flip? And uh, you know, they always with one start, yeah. one we were placing that. That was the way it always went. Uh, I'd like to see him play centrally if, when they come back. Yeah. Um, he yeah. said it himself, didn't he? It, it doesn't, and it, it, it doesn't work him out in the right hand side. Mm. They need to bring in a right winger uh, in the summer. I think everyone sort of agrees with that. I don't think he can go in. Scott Wright did well, and, and I think he's a good squad player, but he needs someone <laughs> else out there and not. Fitting sort of square pegs and round holes out there, I don't think. The thing is, Hadji's no, he's no quick enough to play it in that way. You know, I mean, he's no. got to get back to, to protect Tavo, cover for Tavo when Tavo overlaps, and then yeah. obviously, you know, getting forward his cell. I prefer him in one. I think he's a he's a goal threat when he's in one as well. And if he can link up with, with Alfredo, we've never really seen the two in full flight together. Do you know what I mean? I think that could be special. Kent on the other side, and as you say, Del, if we can bring in somebody on the right hand side. Bring Ken uh, Dace home. That's what I was I just going to say that. Bring <laughs> Daniel Ken Dace. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> she never let take let, I like to let go by. I'm telling exactly. you right now. No. Shock. <laughs> um, on, on the incomings, it looks as though we, we did have a wee bit of movement on the, the, the transfer of Antonio Cholak. Tell we we anticipate that to get through in the next few days, don't we? We believe that he is probably on his way to Glasgow at some point within the next day or two to, to complete a medical or maybe you know Portugal. I don't know how these things work, whether he'll meet up with them at the end of a medical or come to Scotland. Day. I'm not sure you maybe know better than me, but that is going to go through, and it? Bad yeah. medical complications. Yeah, it's all done. Players itching to come. Um, there was just a hold that, of course, the, the, the Greek side POK wanted to bring in. Another striker because I think they've only got one recognised striker if Cholak leaves. So um, that was holding up the deal, but that that'll be done yet. And I think it's a good bit of business. I think the money they used in the sale of Itton and then Rory Wilson going down to Aston Villa has been used towards it. So I think in that sense it's a good bit of business. He's a good age. They're not necessarily going to get a, a sell on from what he's 28, 29 September, yeah. but I think he's going to come in and. I spoke to a guy, a Malmo journalist, and he said he scores goals against the worst teams in the league, which Rangers are crying out for, guys, teams that play the low block. So he said if you supply cross crosses in him, he'll more than often get on, uh, more than not get on the end yet. So uh, I'm excited to see how he gets on. He's a proper penalty box poacher. It's not quite worked in Greece. Did well at Malmo. Uh, and apparently it was just sort of priced out of a move there. Um, they'd, their record... Uh, transfer fees 1.5 million euros I think so they weren't going to splash the cash for uh, Cholak but um, it looks like Rangers have got them in uh, yeah and I think it's a, I think they needed to add I've, I've written record I think they need two strikers um, so he'll be one of them uh, and I'm hoping that they bring in another one uh, as well um, and then obviously it depends if any players leave the likes of Kamar Roof if the money's right he might uh, head out the door of Morelos, of course. You're hoping that he signs a new deal, but I think it's important to strengthen in the in the attacking areas. Ross Stewart, maybe playing against us on Saturday, maybe. I'd I'd happily take him. I like him. I think he's a good player. Um, as well as Sunderland, we'll, 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 we'll let him go. Um, but I think he's one that I would be pleased to see him if he was paraded at Ibrox with a scarf above his head. Um, good player, good target man, but he's good. With the ball at his feet as well. Um, obviously, he knows the Scottish League as, as well, and then he's, he's recently played for Scotland, so uh, his career's on the up, and I would happily take him as another option as well, isn't he? He's, he's a physical player as well, so you can, you'll can you be rest assured that he'll know how to deal with the, the physicality of the, the Scottish game. So, uh, yep, I would happily take him, but whether that they get him in is, remains to be seen, I think. Going forward... <coughs> You know that obviously off there they would say that the club were hard at work and try to identify players. We've we've identified a right winger and 
key to what they actually what Dale was saying is that probably a lot of them are in the media. So just because a player's in the media doesn't mean to say he's going to sign for us. A lot of players end up in the media because they've been mentioned on Twitter by people just like us. <laughs> then uh, some journalists will pick up and go, well, that must be concrete. They must know something. And then all of a sudden he's a target for Rangers and it never happens, right? I always remember David Edgar saying on his Murray Years um, podcast that he'd done that he didn't actually think that um, David Murray knew who Paul Gwen was and it was lifted from Follow Follow. Paul Gwen is his manager. And then David Murray asked him uh, uh, and Mark Dingwall about what would you think he'd be like as a manager? Do you know what I mean? So that's how easy these things and also the press picking them up, just pick up the message boards, just going, oh, he might be a target for Rangers, right? We'll just put him in there. And all of a sudden it becomes a frenzy and it's, it's mental and then we're not doing it when players don't come and it's just crazy. I wouldn't really thank you for being a journalist at this time of year. Um, because there must be so many stories left, right, centre that you need. And surely, to God, you must get checked because the amount of players that were linked to it is frightening. Uh, absolutely frightening. But Cholak coming in, I don't think, again, I don't think we should expect that player that played at Ibrox. I think that's probably Cholak hyped up by the occasion, by playing in that stadium, um, with what was at stake, etc. I, I don't think we should expect to see that player every single week because that's what we fall into this trap. He was brilliant against us at mm. Ibrox. He's going to be brilliant for us every week. It's a lot harder to play with the jersey on your back than lining up against the jersey. And that's where Cholak is going to have to prove himself because if Morelos is fit, you'd imagine Alfredo would start as his number one striker. Cholak has to try and get his chance, get his opportunity and, and work hard to stay there. Obviously, depending on transfers and stuff like that with regard to Morelos. Right hand side, Derek is saying about the right hand side is a, pl- a position that we have to improve on. Jason, would there be anywhere else in the part that you think Rangers have to improve on or have to add to or open it up generally to anybody? Is there a position there that jumps out that you think we really need to strengthen in there? Mm, put me on the spot, Scott. Why don't you? Um... <laughs> but it's all about me. It's, it's all about me. No, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I. I, I uh... I agree with the boys. I think the uh, if there's an area of the pitch that we wanted to to really focus on, it would be the attacking options. You know, obviously we got the business done uh, in January with Suter coming in. Uh, obviously we've got Halander coming back. I appreciate you know he's very much injury prone. Uh, Katic coming back is another option as well. So I think we're good in that in in that uh, position. Uh, I think like uh, like Dale said, further up the pitch is where we probably want to be doing. Uh, our best business, obviously, with Aribo probably heading out. Um, Roof, perhaps, there may be offers that come in. And then that, that sticky situation with, with Morelos as well that, that could be looming over our shoulders um, shortly. So, yeah, I mean, if we can get um, the creation in and then maybe another striker on top of that, I think we'll be in a, a decent position, uh, certainly from my perspective. But what do I know? I'm just a wrestler. So, uh, <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Policies, striker, right winger, anywhere else do we think? I mean, what do you know? You're just a seaman, but what do you know? But that's your opinion, mate. It's my yeah, opinion. well, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the exact same. I just think we need to right wing, we need to strengthen the right wing and uh, attacking options up front as well. Uh, say, uh, Alfie's in his last year of his contract. We don't know if he's going to sign a new one. Uh, Kemar Roof is he's a great finisher, probably the best finisher at the club, but he's far too injury prone. So we have to get cover in there. So we've got Cholak coming in now, but we need that. We need a another um, just to provide cover or as a new central uh, strike force, depending on what happens in the future. But no, it's like right wing, attacking options. Midfield's pretty much bogged down. Do you know what I mean? We've got, we've got Jack, Lundstrom, Davis is there saying another, another year. Kamara. Uh, um, he, actually, Kamara, if a decent offer comes in for him, he may be out the door. You, you don't know. Um no, I think midfield's pretty much settled and it'll look after itself defensively. We're, we're fine. And goalkeepers. Well, there's, there's, Abundance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, I do actually feel sorry for McCrory. You know, he, I think he probably thought, well, I'm going to step up to number two here and then I'll make some cup games. It's all gone by the, by the wayside now, I think. So it's a shame for see him. On that, see, on that, though, mate, I think Gio showed this. Jason uh, touched upon at the, Har- the Harps game, the last game of last season. We are well stacked in terms of quality young players in there. You know, I don't think any of them. I know it was, as Jason said as well, I know that pressure was off a wee bit, but the pressure wasn't off for them because they had to step in and show that they were capable in that environment. A lot of them did that. You know, Cole McKinnon gets the goal. Um, you know, Alex Lowry that we know about, Charlie McCann, I thought was excellent as well. Um, 
So it was it Divine at right back as well, wasn't it? Adam Divine. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's, there's there is quite you know talented youngsters there. I wonder as well if Gio's looking at that and saying, well, if a couple of players exit the club, we bring in a couple of signings that we need, proper signings that are going to cost us not a lot of money, but a bit of money for in our standards, and then kind of try and get a tune out of the younger players. I think that's the way we're going to go, Paul. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, we, we are unfortunately we're no no longer. You know, the, the, the club of uh, 1992, 1994, that sort of thing, we were spending massive amount of money, you know, and attracting the very, very best. It just, it just doesn't work like that. Money's completely, completely ruined the game. You know, the English clubs are just dominating absolutely everything. Um, we, we simply can't we can't compete. It's, it's, it's that simple. So we have to be this, bring them in, uh, bring them on, get as ma- and maximise the profit you possibly can. The way that's why by getting the youngsters in with paying for development fees that like we've done with the repo and then selling them on for maximum profit that you can possibly get at that particular moment in time. I know people are going about repo again and saying, oh, you know, we, we shoot, he is worth, he's, he's a 20 plus million player. Of course he is, but he's in the finale of his contract. He's made it very clear he's not going to sign a new one. The club is, the club right now is at the stage where there's a 10 million activation clause in his contract. It might as well, that's it. He's not going to stay with it. Let's, let's just do that. That's it. And to be fair to the club at the time, in the mind, they bought for £300,000 and, and they inserted this £10 million clause. Maybe uh, maybe expecting them they could sell them for 3 or £4 million. It's gone for 10 That's just You can't really complain about that. But that's a model we have to be now. Um, and I think it's for the older generation of, of uh, supporters, uh, like, like certainly myself, do you know what I mean, who are the members buying Toy Andrew Flo for £12 million and all that sort of stuff. We can't do that anymore. It's, sim- it's simply we have to live in the real world. We want marquee signings. It's it's very unlikely that sort of thing's ever going to happen again. Yeah, totally, totally. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Or are we happy to wrap it up there? Right, I think so. Golden, we're happy to wrap it up there. <laughs> 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 Just a wee bit of wee bit of pod stuff. Um, Rihanna and Car are back, and they've have a cracking interview with Tessel. Dag from the Rangers women's team. Mm-hmm. Um, it was recorded kind of prior to them winning the league last year. Um, but for one reason or another, just busy, etc. We never got it out till yesterday, which is today, but this will go up tomorrow. So you can get what I mean there, everybody following that. Aye? So it was out yesterday. Um, Tess, Tess was brilliant, but her phone died before we got to the end of the podcast. <laughs> and then she was too busy to get back on. So we've got the pod set as it was. And that's the way we go here. Right? Um, so that'll be that that is it just now. And then on Friday at ten o'clock we have a, a debut of our new series, which is total football coaching and management. And we have former Rangers player and County Beef manager Morris Ross on me and him sat down and had a discussion and it actually was very, very intriguing. I'm interested in all that side of things, um, you know, the coaching side of things and what goes on behind the scenes. Morris Ross was pretty open, by the way, about a lot of it. I asked him, I touched on his time at Rangers and the managers he worked under, Dick Advocat, um, he was the kind of tail end of Walter as well, who was the, the youth team captain at the time. And then obviously Alex McLeish bringing him into the first team fold, really, um, properly and playing him. And then he, I'm moving down south in Norway and the Faroes, etc. All the influences that led to him becoming a coach um, in his own right. And it was an absolute pleasure to deal with. So my thanks to him for that. And above all else, I think that's it. Hopefully, next time we speak to we speak to each other, Rangers will have made a few signings. We'll have another <laughs> win in preseason. Nice under the belt. <laughs> <laughs> we'll beat Sunderland, and we're looking forward to uh, the games against West Ham and the like at Ibrox. Um, but my thanks to Paul at Seas for joining us. It's lovely to have you back on, mate. If you, obviously, we're only on last week, and that's the first time on this season. So, thanks very much, yeah. mate. No, thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm looking forward to the season coming up and getting back into the studio and doing things properly again. Yes, definitely. Derek Clark, safe travels, mate, to Portugal. Yeah. Yeah, Whoever cheers. your roommate is, let us know, mate. We'll get out <laughs> <there>. <laughs> Remember to say, flying's not dangerous. Crashing is dangerous. <laughs> right, thanks for that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the legend is Jason Reed, mate. Thanks for, thanks for coming back on. Pleasure as always. Uh, love being a part of it. Yes, mate. Good, good. And I'll need you put your thoughts in money in the bank soon, right? But anyway. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Final thoughts on the show. Again, echo what I said at the start. Mm. Our thoughts go out to the legendary, uh, the goalie, Andy Gorham. Um, absolutely gutted that. that that the goalie is no longer with us. However, 
legends never die and the memories are there to be lived and remembered and whatever else, you know, and I'm sure we all remember that save against Pierre Van Hooydijk and the fact that he broke many of their hearts on many occasions. So rest easy to Andy and he's not in any pain anymore. So that's that's the most important thing. We'll see you next week for week three of the preseason diary. Derek will be sunburnt or look like an absolute <laughs> Adonis tan to the max. We'll come back the same colour of, of one I watch, I tell you. I'm <laughs> delighted if I'm as white as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Alabaster. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy the game on Saturday, everybody, and hashtag keep the battle fever on. When I was a young boy, my father said, to me put this scarf around your neck and sing the blues with me and now I am much older there's a place I want to be it's red faucet is beautiful it's steeped in history and I know what I'll find when the place comes alive I